Hi there, you've probably heard a lot of people say that you have to use a LUT when you're converting DLogM to Rec 709 so you can even color grade it. In this video, I'm going to show you that you can actually color grade DLogM in DaVinci Resolve with no LUTs required, and you may even get as good or better results than if you would have used a LUT such as DJI's own Rec 709 conversion LUT. So let's head into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what I mean. Here we've got this D-Log M footage and a timeline. The first thing we're going to do is come up to the file menu and we're going to come down to project settings and we're going to click on color management. And we're going to want to make sure that the color science here is set to DaVinci YRGB. The timeline color space is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and the output color space is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. The reason we're using DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as this timeline color space is this gives us a big working space to edit our colors in without coming up against any restraints. Ultimately, this will be transformed to Rec 709, but it means while we're doing our color grading, we're not going to run into any boundaries. It's also a great choice if you're working with lots of different footage from lots of different cameras. So once you've set up your color management here, we're going to switch over to the color page. So in this first node, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the input color and transform it to DaVinci Wide Gamut because we want to work in that bigger color space. So we need to convert the incoming D log M and to do that, open up effects and search for color space transform and drag that onto this first node. You get these properties for it open up and the input color space is Rec 709 and the input gamma is also going to be Rec 709 and this might seem a bit odd because if we look here we can see that we actually do have DJI D gamut and for the input gamma DJI D log. The reason we're not using these is because D log M is not the same as D log. If you try and use these D log settings on D log M footage it's going to look terrible. The reason we don't have D log M in this list is that D log M is a proprietary format that only really DJI know about. And so the people that create DaVinci Resolve Blackmagic, they can't actually add the programming logic to convert D log M footage. Whereas true D log is a standard that they've published a white paper on. And so Blackmagic can support it within Resolve. So these first two boxes are all about the footage that we've loaded into DaVinci Resolve. Now we want to choose the output color space from this node. In this case, the output color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut and the output gamma is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And you can see this drone footage here, if I just go full screen, is looking really flat and washed out still, but that's okay. That's because we haven't yet told DaVinci Resolve to output this as Rec 709. What we need to do to do that is right click on this node and choose Add Serial Node. And then we're going to drag a second color space transform onto this new node. And for the input color space, we're going to choose DaVinci Wide Gamut. And for the input gamma, we're going to choose DaVinci Intermediate. So this node, if we give it a node label, is going to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And this node here, if we give it a label, is going to Rec 709. We need to finish off the settings for this second color space transform. The output color space, we're going to choose Rec 709, and the output gamma is going to be Gamma 2.4. Watch what happens when I click Gamma 2.4. We can see the image change, and if I just use Control D to disable that node and re-enable it, this is before converting to Rec 709, and this is after. So we still have some work to do here, but this has set up the framework that we need. All of the color grading choices we make are going to happen between these two nodes. So we're going to click this first node, right click and choose add node and choose add serial. This will add a node after this and I'm just going to drag this down here to keep things organized. In this first node, we're going to work with the exposure. So you might like to come down to the scopes here, click on this drop down and change this to waveform. This shows the darker areas at the bottom and the brighter areas at the top. The first thing we want to do is set our basic exposure. To do this, I'm going to click on this HDR button here and I'm going to adjust this exposure slider. I'm going to hold down the mouse button and drag it to the left to start bringing down the overall exposure of the image. This is a tricky scene because we've got a lot of shadow and a lot of bright highlights in the sky there. So we'll drop it quite a lot, something about there. 
If I hit Control D to see a before and after. So we've got a bit more detail back in the sky now. If you want to, you can right click and add a label to help you remember what's going on here. We're going to right click this node and add another serial node. And this is an important concept because you really want to ideally just do one job in each node. The reason for that is you can quickly turn off and turn on nodes to see what effect they're having. And also you don't end up mixing things all together in one node, which makes it really hard to work out what's happening sometimes. In the second node, I'm going to go and modify the contrast. To do this, I'm going to come back and click on this color wheels to get to these primary color wheels because I like to alter the contrast in these primaries. To alter the contrast, we're going to hold down the mouse button over this contrast and then slide the mouse right to increase the contrast and left to decrease it. So we're going to go and increase this quite a lot, maybe something like 1.25 maybe even as high as 1.28. You can also play with the pivot and the pivot really controls how the contrast behaves. You can double click any of these things to reset them. So I might just drop this somewhere about there. Hit Control D to disable it. This is before the contrast and re-enable it to see after contrast. The next thing I'm going to do is modify the colors. So once again, we're gonna add a new serial node and if we want to, we can give this a label. And now we can really start to bring this image to life. Before we do that, I just wanted to quickly mention my DaVinci Resolve editing field menu, which is a really quick guide. If you want to start editing faster in Resolve, I'll put a link to it in the description. To make some room, I'm going to close the effects. And now we're going to start working with the colors. So I'm just going to expand things a bit. You can also hold down Alt on the keyboard and use your mouse wheel to zoom out of the nodes. Make sure you've clicked on the color node and to make even more space, click on nodes at the top. And we can also close the clips to make even more space. So with D-Log M, you're probably going to find yourself wanting to increase the overall saturation of the image. To do that, I'm going to do that in the primaries color wheel here. Come down to Sat, which stands for saturation. I'm just going to increase this. If you go too far, things start to look really rubbish. So you want to just find a saturation that suits your artistic intent. You've also got this color boost setting, and this boosts the saturation of areas which don't have a lot of saturation already. Be really careful with this because it can make things look horrible really quickly. I'm not gonna use that in this grade. If we actually wanna start altering the colors, one way to do it is to hold down your mouse button on this little dot in the middle of offset and just start moving this dot around with your mouse. You can double click to reset it. In this case, I think I'm gonna try and warm up the image just a bit by moving this dot up and left. This is what it looks like before, and this is what it looks like after those color adjustments. I'm gonna open up the nodes again. And once you're happy with these three basic nodes, you can go and add any final tweaks. I'm gonna right click and do this in a new node. And really you can go to town here and do whatever you feel like you need to. Let's suppose in this image that we actually want to boost these red colors even more. You can do that by clicking on the curves here and making sure you're on this hue versus saturation curve. Click on this red button and it adds these control points. You can take this control point in the middle and if you increase this, it's going to increase the saturation of reds and if you decrease it, it will decrease the saturation of reds. So in this case, let's go a bit wild and really increase that. This is what it looks like before. And this is what it looks like after. And you can see we're getting a bit of additional color in these shadow areas, which we might want to take care of. I'm not going to go into that in this video. If I select all of these and hit Control D, this was our starting image. And this is what our final image looks like. If your DJI camera supports it, you might like to consider trying to record in HLG instead of D-Log M. I've got a video here which I think you really should watch on color grading HLG footage in DaVinci Resolve. And there's also a link in the description on a discussion on what exactly D-Log M is and why HLG might be a better choice. 